Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Millie's Base Side Chats, where we are live streaming to bring some calm to the chaos of your PCS. Every week, we're going to interview duty station experts to give you the dish on headed to an, or heading to an installation that you may or may not heard of. We're going to talk about commutes, schools, climate, culture, neighborhoods, and other tips. So be sure to tune in each and every week, um, just so you can catch the little nuggets along the way. My name is Kelly Artis. I'm the host of the show, and I am really, really glad you're here. All right, everyone. Welcome back. We had um, a few days off over the weekend. It's kind of an eventful week. Um, we had so many scout jobs rolling in over the past weekend. It was super exciting to see. So I am loving the fact that you guys and the community at large is starting to tap into the resource that is our scout network. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. The topic of today's show is PCSing to Fort Benning, Georgia. So if you are headed to Fort Benning, or if maybe you've been there in the past and you have some insight to provide, please be sure to speak up in the comments. We would love to add your voice to the conversation. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you have questions, be sure to throw those at us. So we are here. We have our Millie Scout. Her name is Nicole, and she is joining us from Fort Benning, uh, right on the brink of a PCS for her, but she is still there and still has tons of insight to share about the Fort Benning area. So without any further ado, let's bring her on. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Kelly. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. I'm so excited. We finally got this scheduled. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah, and it looks lovely there this morning. Sun sunny day, nice southern yeah. South Georgia weather. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had to close the blinds because it was too sunny. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, so let's jump right in. Can you give everyone who's watching this either now or maybe later on the replay just a quick intro? Uh, tell us your story and how you came to find Millie. Um, I have been an Army wife for almost 15 years. My husband, we've been together since he was in ROTC, so I've been along for the whole ride. We've been to Fort Stewart, Georgia, Fort Lee, um Fort Leavenworth then Fort Hood to Fort Benning we've been here about two years and we're heading back to Texas to go to Futures Command in Austin and we know after that assignment we'll be going to Fort Hood so we've been a lot of experience in Texas um as far as Millie I found Millie because I'm also a homeowner I'm a landlord I have a house in Fort Hood and on the military landlords page, people are always talking about, oh, just hire a Millie Scout. So I was like, what the heck's a Millie Scout? And that's what brought me to find this page. Um, and I joined Millie in October of 2018. So I've been a scout since then. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, we, we love that page. You guys, if you don't know about the military landlords page, it's <laughs> a really rich resource where folks are always kind of like sharing things that are happening or looking for resources. That's a good place to pick up, pick up some information. So cool. I'm so excited. Um, so have you had any scout jobs yet? I've had one scout job. It was, it was awesome. Um, it was a, the tenant had moved out and I went to go help the property owner take pictures of the house. We FaceTimed through the house to check for any damages so she would know how much of a deposit to give back. And I've had a lot of inquiries for people who need the agent hero program. Yeah. Who are looking to buy a house. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, let me just take that opportunity right there to distinguish the two programs. So our scout network, if you guys aren't aware, um, they're essentially independent contractors. They're military spouses, just like you stationed far and wide. We have, a, I think 130 now scouts across the country, um, everywhere, but Alaska, for some reason, Alaska, it's not a, not a go, but <laughs> the rest of the country, they are there and standing by and ready to help you either. Um, as a prospective tenant, let's say you're looking at homes and you can't quite swing the recon trip. You know, you can't do the flight and the childcare and the time off work and all that stuff, but you really want the house or a house and you're prepared to sign sight unseen, but you'd feel better if you just had another set of eyes on it. Um, so you can hire folks like Nicole and she can walk through and FaceTime with you on the house, open all the closets, all the cupboards, you know, that maybe didn't make the listing photos, that sort of thing so that you can make an informed decision. She also can help you with, um, if you have a property that you've left behind somewhere and you are self-managing as a military landlord. So let's say you just need somebody to exchange keys with the new tenant, but you don't wanna fly out or travel to do that. You can hire Nicole to do stuff like that. We're not property managers, we're just fact finders and we will gather information for you 
to make informed decisions. So those are our scouts. Yay, scouts are just amazing. I think it's awesome. Um, scout, the scout program is actually how I came to Millie too. It was one of those like, there should be a thing where I don't have to drive to North Carolina to check on my property. Um, and I don't want to burden my friends with it, right? <laughs> it's like, I'd rather pay somebody to do it. And who better to pay to do it than a military spouse who understands the lifestyle and probably is a little real estate savvy, um, him or herself. Agent Heroes at our our network of real estate agents, and we vet them on some pretty strict criteria so you know exactly what you're getting. You're getting someone who's been in business for five years, who does a, like a significant volume of transactions. This is their main job. This isn't like a side gig for them. This is what they live and breathe. And they also have to be a military spouse or a veteran. So those are our criteria so you know you're gonna work with a top, ca top caliber agent and it takes the stress off of actually having to like interview or sort through recommendations that can get really deep on the Facebook threads. <laughs> so if you need an agent, reach out. We'd love to just pair you and take that one decision off your plate and just pair you up with a rock star agent. So thank you for that opportunity, Nicole. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so we are talking about Fort Benning today. So tell me about what you first thought of when you got orders to Fort Benning um, and where you started with your research. Like, what were what was your feeling about, oh, we're going to Georgia? <laughs> well, we spent five years at Fort Stewart, oh, and I, okay. loved, I love Fort Stewart. It's so my different. first reaction was, we're going to the landlocked side of Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's Alabama, y'all. It's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right on the Alabama-Georgia border. Mm -hmm. Um because Savannah, you know, you have the beach right there. What I didn't didn't know was that Destin and Panama City, it is a short enough drive away. Um, and it's very hot here. I guess being on the Alabama side, I thought that it would be a little cooler than Savannah. I actually think it's almost hotter. It's maybe because it doesn't have mm -hmm. the ocean breeze. Um, it's incredibly humid. And it also rains a lot. Um but, I mean, we have sunny, hot days, too. But it rains more than I, I guess I realized. It rains more on this side of the state than it did in Savannah. Hmm. Um, but that said, I when I moved here, I dug into a lot of the local area pages. The Fort Benning Spouses page is a really good group. Um, they have a lot of information on there. So I, I immediately found the Spouses pages, asked questions, looked up information, uh, a lot of the battalions here have their own spouses group too. So you can go on those pages for information. Um, and they help me to, you know, get excited about coming to Benning and not be so grumpy that it wasn't so close to the ocean. <laughs> I have to say, like, I've spent a majority of my young adult life in Charleston. So I can see that being a problem. <laughs> yeah. Leaving the beach is hard. So I feel you. And Savannah's gorgeous. Um, yeah. So yeah, I guess if anybody watching this has questions about Fort Stewart as well, this would be a great opportunity to toss those in the comments. Um, okay, so what are tell me what some of the options are as far as what you'll hear in those spouses groups. So typically you, hit in, you head in the spouses group, okay, tell me everything, and then you'll see people reference things. I know, isn't Benning where they talk about exits, where you live off an exit? Yes. They do that too there, right? Okay, so can you break that down a little bit? Like, what are people going to hear? What are the areas that you'll be recommended? Everybody says, um, when they reference exits, they're referencing um, I-185. There's, like, three different highway systems here, I-185. There's also the J.R. Allen Expressway and the Manchester Expressway. So it was very confusing to me when people said, stay north of exit 10. Like, <laughs> I don't, what highway are you talking about? Um, and really, I would say exit 6 or higher. Um, there's good places around exit 6. You don't have to stay north of, of exit 10. Um, and then on the, the opposite side, because Fort Benning is right on the border. Of, Alabama's on one side of the, the post and Georgia's on the other side. And the Chattahoochee River divides the uh, the state line. Um, there's communities in Alabama that people like to live in as well. Those would be Fort Mitchell. Um, and Fort Mitchell, you can get a bigger house for less VA, less rent, um, but you will have a drive 
Uh, I think there's like one tiny grocery store in Fort Mitchell. You'll be driving probably 20 minutes, maybe more to get to Target uh, and all the shopping areas. I, I couldn't tell you how far Fort Mitchell is from Post because there's a back gate. So it kind of would depend. You'd have to calculate that based on where you're going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, Smith Station is another popular community. That's a little closer to Columbus. And then Phoenix City is the city right right across from Columbus. So Phoenix City is the closest area in Alabama to getting all your shopping, going to Target, going to the mall. Um, on the Georgia side, on that map, there's Uptown. Uptown is like, that's what they call downtown here. And that's, they have a lot of cute <laughs> shops down there. They have concerts during certain times of the year. They have Friday night concerts, a farmer's market. Um, you're not really going to find a place to live in uptown. It's mostly apartments. Tiny like apartments. Yeah. Lofty. Apartments kinda. above the downtown mm -hmm. district. But Midtown has Lake Bottom. And Lake Bottom's a cute area. You can find some historical houses there. That's actually you can probably where I find houses. We well, were there for six months and we lived in Lake Bottom. Yeah. It was super cute. It, it's, it has charm. Mm -hmm. And the, when people say exit 10, they're, they're excluding Midtown. Exactly. Yep. That's why I would say exit six. Um, and here's the road, you guys. This I-85 that she's referencing. And exit one, doesn't it start at Fort Benning? And then it starts yeah. creeping up. And so 10 is way up this way. So, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can find Lake Bottom Houses probably for less rent. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's closer to Post, closer to Uptown. Uh, North Columbus is very popular, and so is Midland. I, Midland is where I live. Um, we weren't too picky when we moved here. We, we try to live on post. The housing wait list can be long at Benning. So we were, we got here homeless and just hit the ground <laughs> running looking for a house to rent. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we looked at Phoenix city. We, we looked at Midland, we looked at North Columbus. It was just a matter of finding a house that was right for us and in the good school district. Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, like all of those towns, I, I don't, I'm not as familiar with Fort Mitchell, but like Phoenix City has some good schools. There's some good schools tied in with Midtown. I mean, you can do all that research. Mm -hmm. North Columbus is known for their schools a lot of the time, and Midland has really good schools too. It's just a matter of driving. That's one thing that surprised me about Fort Benning was that I, coming from Fort Hood, everything was like a 15 minute drive because I lived in Harker Heights. But <laughs> uh, here in Georgia, at Fort Benning, whether you live on post or you live off post, you're going to do probably 20 minutes of driving to get to most places. Hmm. Which isn't horrible, but no. I can also imagine that I, that one vein in can probably get a little congested. So it's just something you need to get acquainted to and, and, learn the patterns, learn when the commute yeah. times are and stuff. And again, it's, you know, learn, figure out where you're working on the installation or where your service member is working. Cause that's going to matter. Right. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause my husband's with the SVAB and mm -hmm. they're out on Kelly Hill, which is like further out from main post. So when you're trying to figure out where to live, if a commute matters for you, it would, you want to know where, where your office is going to be. All right. So we actually have some of those commutes here too, you guys. This is on our website. This is just, you know, gomilly.com and then find a base. And we've got all of this stuff kind of broken down for you. Um, and our scouts helped us curate all of this great information. So you can click on the different areas and get some photos that of the area that a scout took or one of our, you know, awesome military mm -hmm. bosses that helped us out with this content. Kind of gives you an overview of all of the services we have that we offer. So yeah, like, so here's Midtown. Um, this is the cutest little park. Is it, it's like Bottom Park, isn't it? Yes. Is that the park? Yeah. So I spent tons of time there. Um, I actually worked at this little um, day spa that's in the, the shopping center right there. Do you know it? Yes. Wildwood? Yeah. I worked Wildwood. there for a little bit. We were, we only lived there for six months. We were there for captain's career course or something. And uh, I was like, I'm going to work somewhere and like basically convince these ladies to hire me. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, okay, cool. So it was great. I yeah. loved it. And we, I could actually walk to work because I had a little house. It was an old house. These are like the old charming kind of bungalows. 
Some of them mm-hmm. are in states of disrepair, which is the one that we took. <laughs> it was not good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's some cute little gems in there. So yeah, explore all your options. Don't limit yourself. Um, but you definitely want to consider schools. And we have awesome toolkits and resources for that. Also, you can download our school scope toolkit that will help you kind of pinpoint what type of school environment would be best for your child, for your learner, and then um, kind of goes out from there, how to interview schools, how to interpret, you know, the report cards from the state and all the different websites and everything like that. So definitely check those out, you guys. I'll link it in the in the comments later. So yeah. awesome. So, okay, so tell me, so why did you choose, you're in, tell me again? Midland. Midland. So tell me, like, what were some of your deciding factors? We were trying to stay within BAH. Okay. We went a little a little bit over. It's it's hard in this area. The rentals are hard to find, and trying to find one within BAH that was in good condition was a little bit challenging. It was also July when we arrived, so probably some of a lot of options might have been gone by then. Um, we heard that Matthews Elementary was good, so that was one school we were focused on. There's a couple other elementary schools we were looking at. Um, we came to our neighborhood to look at another house and I was pretty deflated. Like we were living in our travel trailer at Uchi Creek campground. That's oh, wow. on, on Fort Benning. Uh-huh. And I was like, I guess we'll just live here until we get a house for the next few months. Oh my gosh. And we stumbled upon our house. It hadn't hit the, the, um, it hadn't hit Zillow yet. It had a for rent sign out front. So we like, we called right away. Like we, we think we want this house from the outside. It looks good. And we toured it the next day and signed signed a lease and everything and moved oh, in. That's well, you, and so, you have to be there to be able to move that fast, right? Yeah. Or, you know, if you want to get yourself situated before you get there, you could start looking, gather up a couple of listings that you're interested in, and contact somebody like Nicole to be able to just kind of help you out if you're if you're willing to do that. <laughs> so sometimes it's a little yeah. scary, but what's the alternative? Living in a hotel or your travel trailer, which I don't have. Right. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One thing about this area, as far as renting sight unseen, I, I would not recommend it. Yeah. Some looked very, very good in pictures. <laughs> there was one house we toured that was slightly over BAH, and I had given up by that point. I'm like, fine. Like, I don't want to pay that price, but we'll go see it. It's got to be perfect if it's that price. It was it was a mess. Like, oh, a, no. a disaster. <laughs> yeah. So, definitely. Yeah. You never know how old the pictures but, are. You never know how the last tenant left it. It's just, it's hard y'all. It's just, oh, and it's one more thing to be really stressed out about. So if there's one thing that we can offer that to alleviate some of that, I think this is a good option. So, um, what are there, are there any, or is there anything that you wish you had known before you had gotten there, um, that you've now discovered that you could pass on to someone else? Um, yeah, I've had- I took some notes. Took out. Y'all, this is uh, why I love our scouts. They always come prepared. Like every single one of these chats, they've got like a dossier of things to share with you. <laughs> so great. One one thing, and Kelly was asking me this earlier. We are on the time zone border. Uh, mm-hmm. Alabama, technically the whole state of Alabama follows central time. However, the immediate communities that are surrounding Fort Benning actually follow eastern time. And then Georgia follows Eastern time. What gets very confusing is that if your phone is set to, you know, change times based on whatever tower you're near, your phone will hop all around. Oh, no so, way. <laughs> when, we, when we first got here, like I said, we were staying in our travel trailer and we were on, we were, we were closer to Fort Mitchell, Alabama. And uh, our travel trailer was like, once you hook it up, then it gets, power so the time on the clock on the microwave was not right and I have a Fitbit so that was matching my cell phone (laughs) and when we called about touring houses we were like "Um, excuse me could you just tell me what time it is where you are to see what our phone (laughs) said to try to figure out what the heck time zone we were in Um, the easy fix for that is to just take off um, that setting for sync my phone to the nearest tower and manually keep your phone on Easter time that's crazy. That's absolutely correct. Because I thought it was just, it was reading where you are, but you're right. It has to hop from tower to tower and they're split. Wow. All right. That's a good. Great tip. <laughs> and I think, uh, don't quote me on this. I mean, if you were going to live in Smith Station, research it. I believe Smith Station schools follow central time. But, but Fort are- Mitchell and Phoenix City follow eastern time. So there's the possibility that you could live 
in one of those Alabama communities that's following Central Time, and the, your soldier will be following Eastern Time, oh and um, I think it's my station. I'm not 100% sure. Don't like mark my words on that. Do your research, but that would be confusing to me. I, I can't live not. in two time zones. I couldn't handle that. I can barely keep my life together in one time zone. I can't imagine having to mix it up. Like, what if you have soccer practice? On the other right. side, but you have like that would be wow. That would and be my wild. my husband and I were both always late. So if I was like, <laughs> you're on Easter time and get to our kids' soccer game, it's some, uh, it would, oh my god, I can't. Like, oh my I'm god, that's that. crazy. So yeah, that's really that's a great point. Yeah, we lived just on the Georgia side, so I never had to deal with that. But that's really good to know. <laughs> um, okay, so tell me about some of the hidden gems that it took you a while to discover, but you just can't live without now. There's a, a bunch. Um, one thing that's really awesome here that you might not think uh, think to look at is the Columbus, it's called the Chattahoochee Public Library, is massive. Hmm. Um, and they have a lot of events. You know, they have their summer reading program. But in the fall, they have like, I think it's in October maybe, they have a huge thing every fall where they bring authors in and you can get books signed. They brought the, the author of Bad Kitty, um, Pinkalicious. The author of Pinkalicious oh, came that's to cute. There was like four authors that came. Those were the two I remember because those were the two my kids wanted to see. <laughs> uh, but it's a really cool event. You can go get bring your books from home, get them signed. They do, they do a lot for the community. And the public library is not like the first thing I would think of when I'm moving to a new place. But the library here is massive. And where I live in Midland, I don't know, we're like maybe 15, 20 minutes from that library. They put these really cool little vending machines closer to in our area of town. And you can go online, request a book, and then pick it up at the little vending machine and return it back at the vending machine when it's due. Oh, that's kind of amazing. So, oh, my God. Like a red that, box. <laughs> yes. That's one of my like favorite little hidden gems around here. There's also uh, the Rock Ranch, which is an hour, an hour from my house, so maybe it's an hour and fifteen from Post. Chick Fil A, Chick Fil A owns a farm out here, and it's called the Rock Ranch. And they have a lot of events. They're not open every day. They post on Facebook when they're going to be open. During certain times of the year, they're open every Saturday. But that's a really cool farm to go to. Um, October, well, no, November first. The day after Halloween, or the, that one doesn't make sense. The first weekend after <laughs> Halloween, they do Pumpkin Destruction Day. You can bring your pumpkins. They th that you can, uh, monster trucks will run over pumpkins. They, they slingshot pumpkins in a car. Oh my God, that's so fun. They drop them from cranes. It's, they also have a little village there. One of those, you know, little kid areas where it's a miniature village and the kids can run through it, pretend they're bankers, uh, pretend they're in a grocery Aww, store. Oh, okay. And they, they sell some Chick-fil-A food, and everybody there is like, my pleasure, my pleasure. God, so it feels funny. like you're at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Do they actually grow chickens and stuff, or is it like vegetables? Grow chickens, you know what I mean. Do they <laughs> I, think, I think they might have a farm part. They bring d different things in. Like this past month, they had a baby animal day, where I think another farm brought in baby goats and baby pigs oh, and baby God. ducks, and you could take your picture with them. Um <laughs> They do some really cute events there. That's so cool. So uh, cool. Yeah, I threw those links in the comments, you guys. So check them out if you're headed there. That's super, those are really fun. Um, one thing about this area, not to talk about fast food all the time. I don't live <laughs> off fast food. But Burger King's here are ridiculously huge. And I would never think, I like, let's go to Burger King. They're, like, massive. Yeah. yeah. One of my friends had a birthday party for her daughter at the one Burger King. It's like bigger than the chick-fil-a playground and they're very clean inside i kind of i think i remember that being like and that's fascinating <laughs> it's kind of yeah. a, a commentary on georgia diets yeah. but <laughs> yeah they're huge <laughs> they're and it's they're nice yeah you're right it's not like you know highway burger king it's like a destination right. so mm, yes. keep that in mind <laughs> um what else yeah. you got uptown uptown columbus it has a lot of coffee shops a lot of cute restaurants I already said before, they have a lot of fun events. The riverfront is there. Mm -hmm. uh, you can whitewater raft on the river. You can zip line over 
the, the Chattahoochee River, so you can you can border jump by zip lining, mm -hmm. Georgia to Alabama. Um, there's a splash pad right there on the Chattahoochee River in the summer, and there's a really big playground for kids as well. Cute. Yeah, I love all those little restaurants they have on the river too, and like mm -hmm. I can I can vividly remember it. You know, like you could sit like right there, the, you could walk it, run it. Doesn't it goes forever too? Doesn't it? Like yes, a trail. It, the river walk, I believe it starts at Fort Benning, right, mm -hmm. uh, right behind the National Infantry Museum, and it's I want to say it's twelve out, it's twelve hours, twelve miles long. That sounds about right. <laughs> Actually, that might be kind of quick. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So you've already mentioned like climate, it's hot. Just brace yourself, humid. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, it's it's right. the south. <laughs> and we came here from Fort Hood, obviously also hot. Yeah. But we didn't realize how much the humidity was going to hit us. Yeah. And it's we hard moved to breathe. <gasps> it's like July. We were like, oh, oh my god, it's the humidity. <laughs> like that old Monica uh friends episode with Monica where she's like, it's the humidity. <laughs> Yeah. Like, it felt like you just walk outside and you get sticky oh yeah you just you just shower twice a day that's what you do um yeah. <laughs> there's no there's no way around that <laughs> so brace mm -hmm. yourself sell off your ski gear you know like you don't need any of that down here right <laughs> um what about like oh well, you said Destin and everything is pretty close yeah I do remember taking trips to Destin um to get to the beach it's it's doable mm -hmm. um and there's Atlanta's plenty of lakes two hours. hmm Atlanta is two hours. Yeah, yeah. Yep, I remember that. But I remember it being difficult to fly out of Columbus. Like, you had to drive to Atlanta, pretty much. Yeah, like this, it's right? a very small airport. Yeah, um, so keep that in mind, too, especially if you travel um, frequently or have family frequently come in to visit. That could be mm -hmm. a thing. Um, ah, this is kind of making me want to go back. I remember it being really lovely. Like, we made great friends there. It was an awesome community. Um tons of shopping options and food. Like it's kind of like coming up, you know what I mean? It's one of these mm -hmm. areas that's trying to breathe new life into their little, their right. uptown, their downtown. Um, yeah. Good food, the good barbecue. Sorry. It's good. Um, mm -hmm. Is it countries? What's the name of that barbecue place? Countries barbecue. Is that it? Yes. There's also it. zombie pig, zombie pig barbecue's newer. That's oh, really is that? Good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So uh, just enjoy it, you guys. I mean, it's a, it's a fun place and there's, um, you know, a lot of like, unit pride there too. I mean, I guess that's pretty much it. Yeah. But it's pretty yeah, they, <laughs> That reminds me that every, I believe every 4th of July, they do it like a week ahead of 4th of July, I think because of people taking leave. They do a massive concert. Um, I want to say that it's Lady Ant Because I'm PCSing, I haven't paid attention, uh -huh. but I think it's Lady Antebellum. Oh, wow. And last year it was like, it was a huge concert last year because it was their 100th anniversary. So they do a big concert. They have all kinds of food trucks and they have fire trucks or fire trucks, fireworks. <laughs> they have fireworks, not fire trucks. They might be there too. <laughs> fireworks. Maybe. Cool. Oh, that's so fun. Well, okay. Uh, Nicole, do you have any like advice or parting words for anyone headed to, to Fort Benning this summer or anytime in the next few months? Um, I'm not sure. Let me just check my notes here. Yeah. <laughs> um, what other things that I... Oh, I know that... Um, that housing sometimes can be tricky at the housing wait list. And that Uchi Creek campground where we stayed is a really good option for people to look into. Yeah. Um, if you don't have a travel trailer, they have cabins you can rent as well. Oh, cool. And they have a swimming pool. So it's a nice area to stay. And I've heard of the MacGyver Suites as well as being a good temporary option. Okay. Um, for long-term stays. Um, and then... One other thing I remembered on my tips that I didn't say is because we're down in the South, a lot of things are closed on Sundays. So if you want to do something on a Sunday, make sure they're open awesome. before you head out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and another random tip on my list here was we have the guide on app here. So if you um, oh, need to get right. around Fort Benning, use the guide on app because Fort Benning is unique, I think, in that some of the training areas are in the middle of post and things are scattered around post. So the guide on app is a really good one to use when you get here. I had totally forgotten about that. I wonder how many, well, I'll look it up and drop it in the links. I remember that being a thing, but then I haven't seen it really elsewhere. So I'm curious how they're spreading out. Yeah, that's a great, great tip. Guide on. You guys like the flags they carry? 
um cool Bye. and there's a uh, if you're coming here i would i would look on facebook for the uptown columbus page and like that for all of their events for benning mwr does a lot like their page so you can keep up on all the events figure out what that july 4th event is and when it's at uh, if you're a parent, Muskogee Moms is a really good page for family-friendly events going on in this area. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, this is great, you guys. Well, I'll circle back and drop these in the link because I don't want to type the whole time. But yeah, these are great because the Facebook pages, y'all know, the groups are where it's at. So you can always come back to this thread and ask your questions. We'll keep on. We'll hang on to Nicole and uh, I'll get her tagged so she can answer questions for you guys if you are needing help being pointed in a direction or need a resource. Uh, we'll be sure to uh, haul her back into the conversation and get your questions answered. And we'll try to circle and, and drop all of those other Facebook pages and links. Um, I want to say hi to Jen. Jen, hi. Thanks for watching. <laughs> um, and what? Anything else, Nicole? This has been so rich. Like, I just feel like I would feel so much better if I were headed to Fort Bend. <laughs> oh, oh, I have like like three more places that people should check out okay providence canyon park is the little grand canyon of georgia that's i don't i, I put that on my millie page too it's it's like 45 minutes to an hour probably from posts and that's definitely a must see it's very cool um and flat rock park is closer to my house i that remember that North columbus midland that's a really Really fun place to go hiking, take the kids, take the dogs, climb the rocks. Um, Fort Benning, I guess, it's very good for outdoorsy, hikey people. <laughs> Lots of places to hike and explore. And one other thing I wanted to plug was that we have a Great Wolf not far from here now. No so, way! Like, it's in LaGrange, Georgia. Oh. It's just the road. Definitely a must do while you're here. I love me a Great Wolf. Oh my God. Do you guys do retreats there? Yes, we yeah. have a strong ponds there. Yep. So we and... do it in Charlotte, and it's like, I never miss that. It's not always my favorite event, but I'm like, oh, we're going to Great Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when, uh, lucky. When they opened, the MWR got free spots, and you just had to be fast, faster <laughs> requesting one. So I got to go to the soft opening with my kids last year. Oh, I love Great Wolf. And just, you guys, it's a big indoor water park resort kind of place. It's like all-inclusive. Um, it's just so fun. They usually have a little kitty like play area for littles. That, so you don't really have to like, you know, watch them like a hawk, tons of lifeguards everywhere, slides, wave pool, right. all that good stuff. But they do a tr really good, um, military discount. So the, I think the code is heroes. So if you don't catch it on a strong bond strip, <laughs> which right. is our, like, you know, the chaplain's sort of program, they do marriage retreats and stuff. Um, uh, so military wide, I know we've been talking kind of army centric cause we're talking about an army post. But um, if, you, if you happen to catch this later and you are a member of another service, type in HEROES in the discount code and it will give you, I mean, it's, it's usually pretty good. I mean, sometimes, you know, if, you, if you're like a repeat stay, maybe that's a better discount. But call them. They're so great on the phone and they'll tell you what the cheapest way is to be there. They're so great. Um, <laughs> I love Great Wolf. I should, I should work for them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay. Anything else? Gosh, this is great. Um, we're, we're also six hours from Disney, so oh, you can pack yeah, in all the families yeah. while you're here. Okay, fun. Yeah. So, I mean, tons to do you guys. Um, what, so I'm going to, we, we've got a couple more minutes. I did want to ask, well, how do you feel about employment opportunities? Um, cause it's something that I kind of care strongly about, um, for spouses. How do you feel? Like, I know there's a decent medical com like industry there. Um, what are some of the other bigger, like larger industries for folks? Uh, this, working in the school districts. Okay. Uh, Aflac is here, the headquarters of okay. Aflac. Their insurance. I don't even know how to say it. I think it's Tysis, T Y T S. It's like a credit processing place. Has uh -huh. their headquarters here. Okay. Um, up the road in Lagrange, Kia has their headquarters here. Oh, cool. Okay. So there's some bigger industries definitely a good area if, if you're a nurse or in the medical field yeah. and on post i believe mwr um there's some jobs on on post for spouses as well awesome so tons of opportunity there you guys oh there's a there's colleges too yeah uh, yeah Columbus state and i think liberty is on the other side on the alabama side so if you want to work at a college 
or go to college. Isn't Auburn kind of near too? Yeah. Yeah. Auburn is close. That's a big one. Cool. Aw, I'd go back to Fort Benning. I liked it there. Okay, you guys. Well, this has been fun, and we have tons of links and tons of tips. I think this is one that you want to take notes on. So hopefully you can either revisit this video and take some notes if you're headed this way, um, and definitely reach out to Nicole. Nicole, where can we find you online? Online on my Millie Facebook page. Millie, we'll tag it in the comments. Yeah, we'll tag it. Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> you might be in the post copy, actually. I think we have your link. Okay. So on your face, you have a Facebook page. And then mm -hmm. um, you also have your Scout profile on scout.gomilly.com. You can literally just type in the location and pull her up. And we'll drop her actual profile link as well. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate spending awesome. some time with you and <laughs> sharing some wisdom. Okay. Thanks. Bye, girl. All right, you guys. So now that I want to go back to Columbus, <laughs> um, that was really fun. I loved, I really enjoyed talking to Nicole about Fort Benning and heading there. Um, it's changed a bit since I was there, uh, probably 10 years ago. But um, if you're headed there, get excited because there's a lot of really cool stuff to do there. Um, it's a really neat community, and I think you'll enjoy your time. If you have questions for the next month or so, Nicole will be there. Uh, she might be, she'll be cycling out to PCS elsewhere here soon, but uh, we pro I'm sure we have coverage. And somebody coming in. So that's the cool thing about our scout network, you guys. The scouts stay with us and they just move and change their zip code when they get there. So more than likely we have someone there that can help you out if you are looking to, you know, rent a property, you have a property there you need help with. Um, and don't forget about our agent hero network where you can connect with a military spouse or veteran real estate agent. Uh, save yourself the hassle. Let us pair you. We'll take that one little headache off your plate and we promise you, you will work with a quality agent who can take care of you and has actually been in your boots um, and experienced this lifestyle. Okay, tomorrow we have an awesome chat. We're going to do this on our front porch over on the main Millie page. It'll be public. Uh, we have Elizabeth Lee from the USO, and she's going to be talking to us about how to live your best TLF life. Okay, so temporary lodging facility. Nicole and I talked about it for a minute. She had a camper that her family was able to reside in while they were, quote, homeless, <laughs> while they were nomads, you know, still looking for a place. Um, and it happens a lot. You get put on wait lists for housing or, you know, the house, maybe you're buying a house, closing date gets pushed back, whatever the case is. Typically, at some point in your military career, you're going to find yourself in a temporary lodging situation. So how do you stay sane? How do you live your best life in that situation? So we're going to talk about all those things, plus the awesome military spouse programs that the USO offers. I'd love to introduce you to some of the stuff that they have going on and some folks over there. So join us tomorrow on the public page. We're going to be talking at noon Eastern. All right, everyone. We had a blast. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we will see you again tomorrow. Bye.